Here we are, Jeff. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hey. We are. Oh yeah. Today. Sorry, I didn't tell you. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing I'm dressed. <laughs> right. Okay, Jeff. Th look, because this is a YouTube show, and this isn't gonna. This is not a, an appropriate conversation for the podcast audio listeners. So, YouTube. What's up, guys? Hi. Hi, it's this is you. exclusive for you guys. Jeff, the new shirt. Yeah, what do you think? Is oh. awesome. It you gets even cooler. Let me stand up here. Like it. Oh, you did, I didn't see the bottom part of that. Okay, that. Okay, listen. I've really got to believe that they changed the designs of the Star Furies from what we first saw, like back in the Gathering and those. Like, like these Star Furies look a lot more sleek, like a lot more uh, rectangular. If you put a box around them, where mm. I feel like they were more square before originally. Which I don't. Do the wings move? No, they're state. They're stationed. Like, Are they? They're nice okay. and nice and good and tight. And like yeah. you can even see, it's kind of cool in here. They they angle in a little bit, like so that yeah. the blasters and stuff will come to a point. It's not like oh, like things. so they like, like they do. Yeah, oh, they do. yeah. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay. A lot of people on on YouTube have talked about when we've talked about the Star Furies, how like NASA asked for the design, and they've like it's a like a physics mechanics kind of a thing. Like it's a very possible design. Sure. Uh, oh, I mean, it, it makes sense to me, especially from a thrusters standpoint, like you, you have the four points and that can orient you in any direction, yeah. depending on which ones you fire. Like, no, all you got to do is fit a nuclear fusion reactor behind a human being and make that safe. I mean, how hard, how hard can that be? No, no, no. You just put the Mimbari thing in there and it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Just it's all goes, good. We don't even need antimatter. Yeah, nice. Clean. Dude, if this was Star Trek, they'd throw they'd throw an antimatter reactor behind that person's butt. Right, exactly. A dilithium matrix antimatter mix chamber. And you know those things. Oh, the magnetic constrictors got offline. Oh, BS. Oh. Get me out of here. Yeah, now. I'm launching out of that little escape yeah, pod. This got. is not safe. No, no. <laughs> Anyway. Spock, get your hands out. I, how many times do I have to tell you, stop digging in the antimatter chamber? <laughs> hey, Jeff, you know what? Huh. This is not a Star Trek podcast. I know, but you know, sometimes it's okay for us to talk about Star Trek, too. It is. It is. It is. I, I am making a prediction right now because it's the only way that I can think to make today's episode better. I'm going to blow past our rule of three, and I don't even care. Just, just do them. Just blow them. <laughs> I don't even care. You you can buzz me and keep buzzing me, and I'm just going to keep laying them down. Wow! Because I've got to do something to make this episode better. I have I have some fun references for this one, so I dug deep. awesome. I dug deep. Awesome. Well, Shall for we? you guys out there on YouTube, if you guys are just joining us for the very first time, Jeff and I are brand new to Babylon Five. We've never seen it ever before, ever, 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 and this one kind of makes me glad. <laughs> but I'm glad to move on. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, I don't know how your feelings are, Jeff. I don't mean to color yours. Anyway, Jeff and I are recording our podcast. It's going to go out on the podcast feed later. That one's going to get all edited and stuff's going to be redacted. This whole piece is going to be taken out. But you guys right here at YouTube get the full unedited version. You get all the rabbit trails. You get the the outtakes, the mishaps, um, the fun stuff, the conversations that Jeff and I have that don't quite make it into the podcast feed. You get them there for you guys. The other thing that you guys get is more interaction with us mm -hmm. the, the the podcast people don't get this much interaction because you guys comment down below jeff and i like to talk unless you guys comment so much that we just like have to go to work right it's just like <laughs> wow like, <laughs> well, we're at 253 comments and my boss is breathing down my neck right now i cannot stay here <laughs> yeah hey mr yeah. boss man i'd love to do my job you pay me for but like yeah there are really cool people here making comments with with no spoilers in them thank you that are because awesome. right that's the rule right no spoilers right. but i gotta respond to these people right. so i just i just feel like we should put that out there like if you guys have been commenting or you comment and jeff and i don't respond i would say one we do see it because mm -hmm. we do skim through it but the, you guys have been so awesome with it it's almost getting impossible for us to actually respond to everybody like we would love to engage you on that level. It just there's a lot of y'all out there, which is awesome. Keep commenting. We'll see it, and there's still just hopefully us, we'll get to respond. Like, it's hi, just it's, it, it's just the two of us, right? Right. Uh, so with that, Jeff, why don't we go ahead and do it? We're talking about a distant star. This is season two, episode 
Quattro? Quattro. All right. Um, yeah, Let's not distant it. enough. It's my first time. You're new here, aren't you? First time. First time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time. Brent, we're, uh, we're going. Hey, hi. Oh, hi. are we? Yeah, we started. I was just doing my Rubik's Cube, dude. Well, that sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, way more exciting than what we have to talk about today. Oh, my name is Brent Allen. And I am also watching Babylon 5 for the very first time. We are two veteran Star Trek podcasters watching Babylon 5 for the very first time. We've never seen it. 30 years too late, Jeff. 30 years too late, a couple dollars short, but we're here now. Brent, we yes. are, this is not a Star Trek podcast, but we are Star Trek podcasters. So those references mm -hmm. are going to come and you have laid down the gauntlet more than once. Here's the deal. We get three a piece. That's it. No more. If you if you start laying more down, I'm just gonna. That's gonna be like eight minutes of the podcast of this. <laughs> it's like no, no. <laughs> but we get three. That's it. That's all we get to stick to. Now we can barter. We can trade. We can talk about using other ones. But there's mm. gonna be no more. Than can six we references. can we borrow from future episodes? Wow. Like, can we put it on credit? <laughs> right, Start, set up an interest thing. <laughs> <laughs> I will gladly pay you two Star Trek references tomorrow for the one today. Right. Oh man, we. I, I don't think I can keep. I have a hard time keeping track of the references in the episode we're in. <laughs> you know, if if only the banks worked like that. Like, yeah, you just can't keep track of how much I owe you. So let's just call it even, right? We're good, like, right? I right, mean, I hit it yeah. pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's gonna be especially hard because what we do here is we try to search for those Star Trek like messages within the episode. That's not a reference. We're searching for those like messages, not comparing it to Star Trek, but using that analytical lens to apply it to Babylon Five. <laughs> And trying to decide how much we've liked the series, Jeff. Brent. I am very eager to hear from some of the folks out there. I am really excited. I know you have some stuff. I and do. I'm very eager. And we have a five-star review. <laughs> yes. This one is for, I can't say this name. Um. Enfoguesta Auto Parts. It ends in Auto Parts. So I can and Enfoguesta Auto Parts on Apple Podcast. Five star review says this has been a lot of fun to listen to. I had the great fortune to find B five during the first run of the first season, and it's really nice to listen to Jeff and Brent having that experience since I can't have it again. Thanks, Enfoguesta Auto Parts. You're very welcome because, you know, here's the thing. I remember what that's like. There was a podcast that that a very good friend of mine, when he was taking somebody, it was one of those, like, there was the expert and then the new guy. And, like, like it was that podcast I sat there like, oh, if I would have thought about it, I would have done that one first. Mm. But that was the thing is it was this person was experiencing that thing for the very first time, and it was, like, reliving it. Like, I totally get what you're talking about in Quest to Auto Parts. So, Hey, I'm glad for it. I'm glad for you guys to be discovering it and rediscovering that first time view because Jeff and I don't know what the heck we're talking about when it comes to the show, except for what we've already seen, mm -hmm. which is not there. a lot of it. Like we're not even almost halfway there yet. No, but we are over a fifth of the way, which yeah. is crazy. It's pretty huge. We have a website, Babylon5first.com. It's the number five, the word first. And we've got a little contact form on there and Maycross Schaefer has sent quite a few emails in, and I wanted to share part of one that they sent. It's very kind, very generous, makes me feel good. I like to read it. But they say, love your podcast. Keep up the excellent work. Now it starts coming and fast. I'm going to say that part again. Now it starts coming and fast. It'll be great to see how you react. Oh, by the way, I give you six out of six deltas on the show whoa yeah like that doesn't even exist 
And we like, got, that's amazing. High five, Jeff. Let's see right? if you're on that side. High five, Jeff. High five and white guys. <laughs> Never goes well. <laughs> the people on the podcast are going to be like, what? Right? They're like, pi- fi- what? What? We, here, exactly. Here. All right. Now, they, now they've got it, too. <laughs> it works great for an audio podcast. <laughs> it's like this, only hey- there was a YouTube version where people could go watch us be absolutely ridiculous fools, Jeff. Wouldn't that be cool for us to do? Amazing. Maybe we should get on YouTube. You oh, know what? We, are. we already are. We're there. Hey, Come do you guys know that you can out. join us on YouTube? YouTube. Our, do we have our own thing yet? Like, is it YouTube.com slash Babylon? Babylon 5 first. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Same we thing. have it? Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice. So you go to YouTube.com slash Babylon 5 first, the number five, the word first, and you guys can check out. You can check out the full unedited version of Jeff and I recording this show. Uh, you can check out my first time responses watching them as long as WB doesn't shut it down with a copyright claim. Um, you can watch highlights. You can watch upcoming previews at like sneak peeks at our next episodes coming up. Uh, all sorts of cool stuff that we have happening over at YouTube. And when you're there, like subscribe because that's what we do on YouTube. That's the YouTube thing. Got so one Jeff, more. Got oh, one oh, oh. Yeah, and this one, this one actually is a discussion point for us. Percy's oh. owner, Percy's owner is a regular interactor with us both uh, mm-hmm. in quite a few places, and so always, always good to hear from Percy's owner. But they offer this. They say, I don't think you need to buzz for actors or writers or directors that have been on Star Trek. Sci-fi is a small world. There's a lot of crossover. In this case, an actor, director, writer being in both shows is a fact, not a reference. Mm. Basically, if it's on IMDb, it's fair game. I agree up to a certain point. Yeah. I think if we're, if we are simply stating a fact of, Hey, this person was also X, Y, Z. I don't think that's necessarily a reference. I think a references is when we're like comparing it like, Oh yeah. Like that one time on that show over there, when this happened, yeah. that's clearly a reference. That's a, but uh, you like my buzzer. That was good. Like Jeff, you have to be here every week because if these people out there have to listen to me just going, like, it's not going to work. It's going to get rough. Well, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like back in, oh, what, well, gosh, one of my favorite episodes so far, TKO, when yeah. Rabbi Kozlov came on, he was Worf's dad in the next generation. Yeah. That's a fact. He played that guy. But if we right. start saying things about how, well, you know, as Worf's dad, he would have blah, blah, sure. blah. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, I think that should be the, uh, the rule now, Jeff, that's actually going to fall mostly on your shoulders. Cause you got the buzzer button over there and you're just going to have to determine in real time. Is it a fact or is it a buzzer? And, uh, you know, that's on you, my friend. Yeah. And those real time decisions are going to show why I don't pilot an aircraft or a star fury, for example. No. Hey, you want to know another reason why people need to go to our YouTube channel? Out. So they can see your awesome Star Fury shirt. This thing's pretty cool, huh? I am loving the shirt. I wish they made one my size. They got they got them on Etsy. I got this on Etsy. It was great. Uh, if I think about it, I'll link it in the in the notes because the store is <laughs> awesome. They got a lot of really cool stuff in there. You should do that. Yeah, let's give them some love. Yeah, totally. Maybe they'll send us like a quarter for every shirt they sell. Uh, that'd be nice. Or just shirts. I'll be fine with more shirts. <laughs> that'd be cool too. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jeff. You know what we really like here along with our comments and stuff from people out there. We like our games. We like our games. Yep. We like our games. And one of the games that we like is where we get to the end of the episode and we guess what the next episode is going to be about having absolutely zero knowledge of it, except for the title that we just learned then and there. The second half of that game is in the next episode at this moment right here where we try to remember what we said last week, this episode was going to be about and we'll see how right we were or how utterly wrong we are the vast majority of the time, except I think I'm batting like a thousand so far. Or maybe like 300, but that's still maybe, great. That's great. Maybe like 850. Maybe like 850. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Jeff, do zero, you? Zero, 850. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, do you remember what you said you thought this episode, A Distant Star, was going to be about? I do. I thought it was going to be about like where the shadows come from and kind of what's their makeup and Mm -hmm. what does it look like on that distant star that they're coming from? And well, there were kind of shadows in this one, sort of. So I'm going to give myself 
uh, 0.1 credit on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give myself zero credit on this one because I don't even know what I said. It was something ridiculous and it had nothing to do with what this episode wound up being about. When you I wish you I miss. could tell you more. I just remember, I remember even thinking it last week, like I have no idea. Right. That's kind of how I, I'm going to feel about the end of this one, by the way. Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, I don't even, I don't know. I don't know what the next episode's called yet. That's all right. We'll find out when we we'll get there. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, basically I, I did not guess what this episode was going to be about at all. But now we're going to find out what this episode was about. For those of you who haven't watched this in a long time, if you're not watching at all, or if you're watching along with us, Brent, why don't you tell us about this second season masterpiece of a distant star? There's a little bit of sarcasm in that lead in, by the way. <laughs> well, hey, who's ready for a new ship that we've never, ever seen before? This could be kind of cool. It's the EAS, that I'm guessing that's Earth Force Alliance ship. Cortez, which is an explorer ship, kind of sort of looks like a miniature Babylon 5 without most of the whole plating, just sort of a skeletal Babylon 5 is what it reminded me of. And if you ask me, uh, it is coming to Babylon 5 for what I shall say is... <clears throat> I don't know if this is a reference because it's literally what they said. A five-year mission. It's what it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> its captain is Jack Maynard, who is a snarky old friend of Sheridan's who calls him a swamp rat. Now, Maynard is shocked to learn that Sheridan is going to settle for a desk job. Hmm. That conversation also sounds familiar. And honestly, so is Sheridan. And just four episodes in, it has him rethinking if he really wants this job. And those things that we would normally say is like good leadership moments by Sheridan that we see throughout the episode. Well, really, it's just him being moody now and kind of a jerk. More on that later. What's really important here is that we have more news coming in from the rim. Maynard says that they basically saw a ghost ship out there, but only for a second. Somehow they get to talking about spending time in hyperspace, which I guess is a thing in Babylon 5 that you just spend time in hyperspace. You don't just pop in and out. And nothing can live in hyperspace, right? Right? Or can it? Okay, well, while we think on that, let's check in with a couple of the B plots just so we kind of know what's going on over there. Number one, the Mimbari are beginning to question if the Lin is still Mimbari. The whole question is kind of left unsettled by the end of the episode, but we do get this awesome line from Delenn where she says that she is now more Mimbari than she has ever been before. I'm sure we'll get back to that in a future episode. The other B plot has Dr. Franklin putting the entire gang on the DVD cover, or at least the ones who show up in this episode anyway, on a diet. That is until Garibaldi gives him some sob story about making really unhealthy food as a way to honor his dead father. And Franklin's like, okay, just this once. And by the way, I'm coming with you because it sounds absolutely delicious and I want dessert as well. Okay. All that's out of the way back to the Cortez. They finished their resupply and they're about to take off. And wouldn't you know it? They're out traveling in hyperspace. Like we just learned that they do. And an explosion rockets the ship and disables it, setting them adrift in hyperspace. Again, because you can just stay adrift in hyperspace and not fall out of it? Sure. Apparently, there's some sort of hyperspace beacon out there, and the Cortez is just drifting away from it, unable to find it. So Sheridan sends out a whole squadron of Star Furies who will act as a relay chain from the beacon to the Cortez. It works. But it... In doing so, that ghost ship, which looks an awful like, which looks an awful lot like those ships that we're assuming are the shadows, are causing a few of those star furies to be damaged. The Cortez is forced to leave them behind. Upon hearing the news, Sheridan just begins sulking, and he goes over to the garden because he's lost the star furies and their pilots. And Delenn meets him there and comforts him. Not in that way, guys. It's it's all innocent. I promise. 
And in the end, she reassures Sheridan that he is, in fact, in the right place. He doesn't need to be going off anywhere else. Just stay right here. And right then, one of the Star Furies with our new guy, Keffer on board, comes out of the jump gate, having regained control of his ship and donning uh, all the plot armor that he can muster. He's saved. And everyone on board is all excited, and they're cheering. And they're so excited that Ivanova names Keffer the new leader of Zeta Wing. So he now has a name and a job to justify him being in the opening credits and on the DVD cover, which I guess means we're just going to be seeing more of him in the future. Well, that's pretty much it for the episode. It just ends with Garibaldi and Franklin. Franklin. It just ends with Garibaldi and Franklin indulging in that diet and Sheridan's in much better spirits and Keffer saying he wants to track down that ship in the hyperspace corridor. And it just ends sort of right there. Why do you make me do these episodes, Jeff? It's because I care. <laughs> <laughs> really? I just thought it's because you don't want to. I didn't say what I cared about. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know? So uh, Captain Maynard is played by Russ Tamblin. Okay. Did you Please know? tell me. I'm sorry. Stop. Please tell me Russ Tamblin played like every Tellarite in Star Trek ever. No, it's. <laughs> you're right. Sorry. <laughs> just because he looks like a tellerite just he like, looks like a piggy tellerite does he not he is like the prototype of that <laughs> i okay so dude russ tamblin so let, let me set the stage i'm watching this episode in preparation to come here and talk to you and all of our incredible viewers and listeners about it mm -hmm. i'm sitting next to my best friend the love of my life my wife and she says I thought the acting was supposed to get better in the second season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. So Russ Tamblin was nominated for an Academy Award. Shut up. Yeah. No, in, he was uh, not. For Best Supporting Actor in Peyton Place in 1956 and won a Golden Globe for the Most Promising Male Newcomer. Uh, the year before that. Well, I think he won the, or was nominated for the Oscar in 57 and won the Golden Globe in 56. He's a golden, he's the most decor, one of the most decorated, if not the most decorated actor. To what, did Babylon he take 5. like 30 years off in between and tried to come back and he was like, I don't know, MJ coming back to baseball or whatever? Well, like, he was also uh, the kind of, so he was also on Twin Peaks and I think he was the doctor, okay. kind of the psychiatrist guy on Twin Peaks. Perfect role for this guy. I literally, I don't know anything about, about Babylon five or whatever. I thought uh -huh. to myself, wow, this guy's terrible. Is this JMS pulling, you know, like, a, you know, a Stan Lee kind of a thing, you know, where he's going to be in the, th oh, oh no, this is an actual, act oh my God, this is an actor with a really, really he's long not... film. Oh my God. He's an award winning actor. Wow. So, you know, I actually had that same thought. Cause I was like wow, are we still back in season one? All right, because let, let's just let's say what it is, Jeff. Season two is not off to a great start. No, it's not. I That first episode was really good. The second episode was kind of like, okay, fine, we're resetting stuff. I get it. Last week's episode was blech. This week's episode was blech. And yeah. if next week's episode is blech, I'll just watch the next week's as well, but I, ugh. <laughs> but I won't be as happy you know, about it. I, I'm mad at you. I'm mad at you people out there right now. Cause you told me it gets better and it's Sher not Sheridan's great. Sheridan's a Sheridan is a breath of fresh air, but That's everything true. else around it. I'm just like, and they desperately, desperately want us to like Franklin. Like they are shoving him in, into everybody scene. This this episode right. made and me hate him even more. This can I? Well, I want to read you my note on this one. I said, uh -huh. uh, "Gosh, where is it here? This is the moment that if I'm Sheridan, I go back and read the notes and I fire Franklin for the Believers incident. Like this is the thing that pushes me over the edge." Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm all and look. Here's the thing. I'm all for doctors, you know, trying to put their patients on diets and stuff. He did it to one guy. And then started like exploding out with it. Like dude just went on a power trip and he just, you know, it wasn't funny. I was, you know, what was funny. It actually made me laugh. 
the scene where they're all sitting at the bar facing the camera mm -hmm. and they're switching the things and Franklin comes by and they got to switch the, I keep saying the things they switch their plates, like to the food that each one wants, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And then Franklin comes by and says something and they all switch back and Sheridan takes a bite and he's just got lettuce leaves hanging out his mouth. That's great. It's hilarious. Comedy gold, that one moment, but the, yeah, I just, I, I'm not, I'm not for Franklin at all. I do want to go back though, because this ties into the season four is not good so far. And neither was season this episode. Two. That's two. what I meant. Episode four, season two. There you go. Yeah. Neither was this episode. Um, I did wonder at some point if this guest actor was it the guest actor or was it the writing of the script? Because I don't know that the script was helping them at all either. DC and I kind Fontana, of felt maybe it's the script. DC Fontana wrote this episode. Shut up. No, she did not. She did. That is false. I that, refuse to believe that the great DC Fontana wrote this I'm, crummy of an episode. I'm going to play some hold music and I want you to go online and look. Distant star Babylon. Five. <sighs> Let's pull it up here. Oh, shut up. Yeah. Dad gum it. Yeah, right? Dad gum it. I'm like, you know you what? Have... Though? That's just because she was given an outline by JMS and she did the best she could with it. Maybe. Imagine how know. bad it would have been if it wasn't DC Fontaine. Yeah, that's a good point. I just, oh, I, um, yeah, it's like you got a Golden Globe award winning oscar nominated actor you've got dc fontana and the most exciting thing about this whole episode is banya kauda is that what banya kuda well i've never heard of that before in my life i want to try it i'm not gonna lie i yeah it's fondue yeah i'm absolutely. not absolutely i'm not an anchovy guy like i've never been into that but no. this made me question that i'm like maybe maybe i am an anchovy guy and i just I don't know with, it. i can go without them yeah just make it without them it's fine well then it's just literally butter and garlic which and oil What's the problem yeah i guess you're right what is the problem <laughs> half a what is a half a gallon of butter or something like that he said that sounds amazing <laughs> you know it's just uh reasons are what they are a cool thing um, though like with yeah. the with the um i don't know just like the whole setup like the outline of this was i, I liked the introduction of the explorer ship in that concept sure. of like these these little mini babylon stations or whatever go out Look at stuff. They build jump gates, and then the survey ships come. Like, oh, okay, so that's how they discover the universe. I thought that was some pretty cool sure. universe building. I I thought it. I thought the ship looked really cool. I I was really excited when I saw the ship at the beginning of the episode because I was like, hey, we saw the Andromeda come and drop off Sheridan a few episodes back. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're getting a new cast member or what, but the idea that we're with ships as they come in and out, not just dropping off passengers, but we're you know, seeing what's happening with that. Like, that's a really intriguing idea to me as it, we go out. That's not just Star Furies, right? Yeah, it, ex it expands the the world, right? Like, there's right. other ships and we're getting doing to know, other things. We're getting to know more uh, Earth Force Alliance people other than just our captain and, and Garibaldi and Ivanova here. I, it, I thought that was really cool. And then they barely did anything with it. Well, they just showed and, us it's a piece of garbage. Like, it makes a hyperspace jump and it blows up. Okay, can we please talk about this? Okay, are we getting brand new rules of how hyperspace travel works from Babylon 5 and in this universe than what we've gotten in any other sci-fi show ever? I think some of the seeds were planted for this. So in- um, Were they? Yeah, so in, I think it was in, in Points of Departure when um, Sheridan sent the laser little communication into hyperspace to get the Minbari to come out and take out the ship, right? You know, that- Mm -hmm. the whole thing where it cut off the engines or whatever he said, he's like, yeah, they, I think they've been waiting in hyperspace for us. There was, Oh, he did say that, didn't he? And I think back in season one, there was something about, I think it was a Vorlon ship. Um, but somebody they, they had mentioned waiting in hyperspace, but huh. so I think like this just expanded on that, right? You go in there and it really like I was, I was a navigator on a, on a submarine in, in uh -huh. the Navy. So I get having like weird points of, you know, of reference to be able to, to locate yourself. This really yeah. made me think of like 
pre Magellan sailors, you know, going off and, you know, there be sea monsters here uh-huh. and stuff where they had very primitive navigation. They could use the stars essentially, which, which is uh-huh. fine, but it's, I mean, it's not very exact. That's kind of what hyperspace is. We're at that point where I'm sure hyperspace, well, and also like, Hey, nothing can live in hyperspace, right? Which totally means things are things are living in hyperspace. Yeah, that's gonna right. be an episode in the right. future. Here's the thing that lives in hyperspace, but there's this whole other world of hyperspace out there that right. has its own rules. And all we know are the beacons that we've set up on jump gates to kind of triangulate positions for. Because see, here's the thing: like the way I understand jump gates to work is they fold space. Mm-hmm. So when you take phase, you you fold it, and then. Tr- you go through one and you come out on the other side. It's not really a corridor as much as you're folding space. So the, there, there's nothing to live in. You don't stay in hyperspace. I'm not traveling through hyperspace. It's, it's, it's there versus a wormhole, mm-hmm. a wormhole, which actually is a tube is a corridor that creates. Now, maybe somebody out there is commenting right now, but in Babylon five, the jump gates create a wormhole between them. Okay, cool. What happens when the wormhole is de-established right yeah you, you know the, what i mean like mm-hmm. we shut off the jump gate you know that's where, I mean? yeah i don't where think it's are a you wormhole. living like is this a whole other dimension that's what i think it is live in? so there's folding space which is how they travel in dune which literally is like whoop, bringing space together and just like there's no travel that happens you're here and then you're here and that, right that's, that's the way it works in battlestar galactica too by the way right with the jumps right yeah. yep boom yep. they just whoop, they're right there in uh in star wars i used to think forever that hyperspace was a speed i remember being a kid and playing with my millennium falcon and being you know being like i'm gonna go to hyperspace six right right right. you know and and, but no it's just hyperspace and as i was doing a little like going down my rust hamblin rabbit hole (laughs) i looked up hyperspace on wikipedia on the star wars wiki wikipedia yeah you didn't know that <laughs> i've never heard of that yeah. before i can honestly i don't think i've ever looked up star Trek, star wars and wikipedia oh wow yeah i should spend a lot of time there okay cool it's Go called w- it's called wikipedia it makes all the sense in the world yeah exactly it's great but yeah. hyperspace in that world is also another dimension that they they enter and it's just allows like things move at a different rate, you know, geography is not quite the same. And so I think Babylon five is similar. The jump gate opens a door to this other dimension, this hyperspace dimension. Oh, you're, you're like living in the mycelial network. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Without the instantaneous for you have to, you have to actually travel through hyperspace. I, see that just, uh, I don't, I don't like that. I it just, it just, I accepted that that's the way it works in this world, but on a, okay, great. I'm going to apply physics and science and stuff to, to how this works. Like I just, that breaks every rule of how I understand hyperspace and, and gate travel and whatever to work like fine. But I mean, or, or are they just dropping into fluidic space? Right. You're just going. I'm, great. I'm, it's, it's either, it's either fluidic space and this is species eight, four, seven, two, or this is where it is from. Wow. Yeah. Cause down here, everything floats. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm glad I you think, got that reference. Yeah. The, uh, I, I've heard a lot of people on YouTube and even on Twitter talk about one of JMS's kind of guiding principles in putting Babylon five together was mm-hmm. that we weren't going to solve problems with techno babble right? It's things that we're going to solve problems by doing things. And we're not going to like throw all this weird mumbo jumbo, even if it's rooted in reality science stuff at things. Well, I present to you in direct, direct contrary, you know, direct opposition to that statement, Mm -hmm. a distant star. Like this is, this is the most convoluted techno babbly blah, blah, blah of how stuff like I think I can piece the stuff together in my head of it, but I'm making stuff up here to make it make any sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. You either have to explain, like, that's the thing you've got to explain how the rules of your world work or stick with the rules that are established elsewhere. Yeah. You know, like take time travel. 
anybody goes into any kind of time travel episode, what do you know? You can't interact with your past self. You can't go in and change the past or else that could have paradoxical effects. You, you, we know all of this, right? Like those are the rules unless you can. Yeah. And you're changing the rules of how time travel works for the story. And you just explain that to us, right? Like you, you need to do that. Okay. Jeff, I don't want to sit here and bore all the listeners with me just going on. I don't like how he did this. This is how it works in Babylon five. Hyperspace is a thing where things can exist at. And B, so let's talk about from a story perspective, because really that I think as far as forwarding the story, like that's the thing we learned is something is living in hyperspace. We assume it's whatever the shadow. Again, I'm leaning towards the shadows are an organization, not this weird conglomeration of just bad stuff that's about to happen, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I think that's kind of where we both are they were not on the rim and then all of a sudden they are on the rim. So maybe they've been living in hyperspace for a while. Maybe that's why they get fuzzy or so. I don't, I don't entirely know, but apparently that's where something is. How do we feel about that? That they're just hanging out in hyperspace shooting people as they go by. Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't have any feelings. Like to me, this literally just presented two facts that hyperspace works sort of the way it does and what we assume are the shadows also use it. Like, that's it. It's just like, I don't have a feeling about that. It's like, okay, apparently that's a thing. And it, it honestly, like I said, it kind of just makes me angry. Like, I'm like, really? Well, I think between you know? the last episode and the tech, like, and literally just kind of being like, hey, here's some stuff and blah, 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 nothing. And then this one being like, well, there's not even really stuff, but also nothing. <laughs> it's like, what, what, what is happening here? I, I don't right. think I don't. So I maybe the shadows went into hiding or whatever in hyperspace. I think there's some other something in hyperspace. That it's it. It's maybe, sleeping. It's right. been sleeping and now it's awake. Pennywise is coming, coming back. There it is. It's been a couple hundred years now. <gasps> maybe Sheridan, right? He's he's a descendant of those kids. <gasps> This is a direct tie. This is a direct. There you go. Hit. There you go. I like it. This that's, that's the theory of the show right there. Right. Yeah. It this all... better be the highlight for the week. Sheridan is a descendant of the kids from it. I like it. Literally the, the, the series ends with JMS shaking Stephen King's hand. Like that's the end. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, I mean that basically like that's the oomph of this episode. Yeah. Okay. So something's there. Awesome. Okay, there's there beacons in hyperspace too. Well, I, mean, I don't want to get back into all that. Yeah, I think um, those were the jump gates, but yeah. So you have to like, I mean, are these like fireplaces on the flu network? Like you got to travel to a certain one and pop out at that one? Unless you have the capability of making your own. Because that's what I think. So you I'm- don't connect between two specific jump gates. You go into a weird thing and then like, there's the room spinning. Uh, let's go through that one over there. Yeah, almost. Is that- like I, I, the way I understood the Cortez talking about just the random huge explosion that was massive and almost killed everybody. That right. Like what? The, I kept waiting for like some home guard, you know, or or terrorist attack thing. That nope, just a, just a crappy ship falling apart. <laughs> like wow. <laughs> But that's, that, I mean, it's an old ship. It's been out there on a five-year mission. You know, it just mean? got replenished and looked at like it should be in decent shape. But either way, so that yeah. happens. And what I understood is at first Maynard was like, "Well, let's just open a gate and get out of here. Like, let's just leave." And they're like, "We can't. We yeah. don't have the power to do it. We don't have the power to maintain our position." I don't know. I don't know. But I do. I do want to talk about Sheridan and what yeah. Sheridan went through because I. I thought that I'm was. Sorry. I'm sorry. Can I interrupt you real quick? Because yeah. I actually had a note from last week's episode about Sheridan that I wanted to share, and I completely forgot. But it comes back around in this episode. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Do it. So in the last episode, Sheridan meets up with his sister, right? And his two sister says, ago. "Was that two episodes ago?" Now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's when it was. So this was two episodes ago, and she says to him, "Oh, you've gained weight." And his response is like, well, you know, when I got here, I looked at the hydroponics farm and uh, just couldn't help myself. And I'm going. And they said it in this episode because Sheridan's getting his physical Mm -hmm. and and 
dude's like, yeah, you've gained 10 pounds to Sheridan. And I'm like, dude, if Sheridan gained 10 pounds, that's a good thing right? for that cat. Because <laughs> he was too thin. He needed some muscle. Like, because you don't come in and go get stuff out of the hydroponics farm and gain 10 pounds. That's not the stuff you're getting. He went in and he liked the mangoes and the oranges yeah. and that stuff. And that's what you're arguing about right now? No. <laughs> yeah, the most weight I ever lost in my life, healthily, was eating nothing but raw fruits and vegetables for a month. Like, you're going to shed weight doing that. And that's what he's been doing. He's been eating this incredible, healthy food. And Put somehow he weight. gains 10 pounds. That means he was underfed. Yeah, he was scurvy. He was scurvy bound, right? <laughs> yes. Maybe I should try just raw fruits and vegetables. That's all you yeah. eat. It's called the raw food diet. It's uh, There's a lot of rules around it, as there often are, but they're pretty simple. You don't cook anything. It's raw fruits, raw vegetables, raw nuts. It's not easy. But the cool thing with it is you can literally eat all that you want. It's not possible to fill up on it or to, to over overdo it. You'll just use the bathroom more. Okay. Interesting. Do you yeah. get like salad dressings and stuff? You can make salad dressings. Um, you can't get anything because like they'll have, you know, cooked eggs in them or whatever. So you'd have to make like pestos and um, okay different green things that you could, you know, blend up a little bit to dress. I did I did a lot of salsa. Like I'd do up these really fun salsas. Oh, and yeah. Then I guess, I guess instead of chips, be... instead of chips, I'd eat them with either uh, sliced cucumber or celery sticks. Worked pretty well. Interesting. I it was the best thing me. I ever did. It was really hard to stick with, though, but I lost almost 20 pounds in a month. I felt better. I was sleeping. Like, by the end of the month, I was only sleeping, like, five or six hours a night, and I felt incredible. Incredible. Like, it was awesome. Yeah, I wish you I had the willpower. Why did, I, why did I ever go off of that? Yeah, right. That's that's the you got to stick with it thing, right? Yeah. Exactly. But you feel great. You feel great. All oh, right, really anyway, good. back to this. Um, You were saying about – that's that's all. that was my thing I had to point out about Sheridan, like – he gained 10 pounds. Really? Yeah. Really? It's a, it's a good thing. Like let good the thing. dude, let the dude have a little bit. And Franklin yeah. again, just needs to lay up telling Ivanova to put weight on dude. Who? Okay. Listen, this dude went Dr. Bashir cringe. Big I don't time. know how many, I don't know how many I'm up to right now, but That's I don't dirty. care. That's he dirty. went Dr. Bashir cringe. She's like, she says this line. It was actually fun. It uh, turns out I am the the expanding Russian frontier, and he yeah. goes, "Yeah, but with very nice borders." Yeah, that was. I'm like, uncool, dude. <laughs> uncool. Great, great pickup line if you're actually trying to engage her, and she hasn't just completely rebuffed you and said no. Like, like, or if you're already in a relationship with her, like, yeah. But outside but of that, like. Wouldn't, Dude, really? Wouldn't season one of Anova though, like bite his head off for that? Oh, she would have ripped his skull off and used it for a chamber pot. Exactly. Like again, I, I, she was more herself in this one than she has been. But again, like it's, yeah. there's just a real change in her. And I don't know if yeah. that's a uh, quick question. Why was she with a cane? I completely forget. She broke her foot in the Drazi fight. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Oh, cool to see them carrying that yeah. over. You were going to talk about Sheridan. I keep interrupting you. I'm going to stop. That's fine. It's good stuff, though. I, I I liked the questioning of stuff. I thought that was an important, like, character moment for him. With Sinclair, it made some sense. You know, like, they really explained why he was put into that position. For Sheridan, it kind of wasn't. No, it's the president wants him there. Okay. And he's been talking, every like, when he talked to his sister, when he talked to um, uh, Stinky, as they called him. Hey. You know, he's like, no, things are great here. Every day is a new, like, he's trying to justify and convince himself he likes this job. And I, and I thought that was cool. Having, having taken jobs in my life that were not what I thought they were going to be, huh. that's a real, that's a real thing you go through and just kind of arguing with yourself a little bit. Like, is this really what I want? Do I want to, is this good for my career? But Okay. I want to come back to this just real quick. I just got an alert. I noticed, am I all blurry and fuzzy to you? You are all blurry and fuzzy. Okay. My apologies to you folks out there at YouTube. The audio people won't care, but you guys do. And I care about you, Jeff. I'm going to refresh my screen because I think that's going to fix it. And I will be right back. Cause, and I want to pick up exactly where you left off of talking cool. about um, Sheridan and 
not sure he's where he wants to be. Perfect. We'll see you shortly. Oh my goodness. Now it's just you and me. How you doing YouTube? I have really been enjoying our conversations about cover tunes. So let's, those happened a while ago. They keep popping up. Let's keep that going. Hey, you look a lot better. Better. Okay. Lot Sorry more. about that guys. Uh, like I said, I care about you guys. And I, I, as soon as I realized that that was, I, hopefully that wasn't happening for too long. It's always hard to tell too. Cause like we don't like, you know, what I see isn't necessarily reality. Yeah. It's yeah, yeah exactly. Anyway, it's video what, stuff. what it is, I, what it, you, you see yourself as perfectly clear all the time as do I. Mm -hmm. But if you go fuzzy, I'll see it, but you won't. Yeah. And if I go fuzzy, you see it, but I don't. So, um, but you are fuzzy again. Am I fuzzy again? Yeah. And actually worse this. than you were. Is it really? I'm sorry, YouTube. Like we're literally in the middle of the show and this is not okay. What is my internet's weird today. Internet is weird. I've got one more possible fix. Give me okay. just a second. We can look at all Brent's cool stuff back there. Hey, he's still got the Babylon 5 thing there. He hasn't sent that to wash. <laughs> or not to wash, but to TK uh, Wash's guy who made it. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. Yeah, well, look at that. Interesting. Gotcha. Gotcha. I have a cool reference I want to get in here. I'm going to share it with you, YouTube, just in case we don't get to it. But uh, it's the guy who played um, Orwell. Orwell, the guy who um, smuggled in the Banya Coda stuff. Coda. Anybody on YouTube see the movie Joanna Man? It's okay. You can raise your hand. You can tell me. I worked at the movie theater when that movie came out, so I had to see it. And I was one of about six people <laughs> that saw that thing, but... I knew I recognized that guy from somewhere. He kind of reminded me of um, any Red Dwarf, Red Dwarf fans out there. That's a fun, that's a really fun show. In fact, back, oh man, it would have been just a little while after this episode aired. So like in 96-ish, I think, I was in this um, rock band, just kind of a rock band out of San Diego. We're called Full Stop. It was really cool, but... When we recorded our record, we recorded this really cool studio in Escondido, but we watched a ton of Red Dwarf during that time. But when I was watching that episode, I'm like, is he just really, I don't know if it's that. But then I went and looked him up. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's from that movie. So go ahead, raise your hand if you're a Juana Man viewer or a Red Dwarf fan. And now I have Brent back and I think he might be frozen. This is fun. It's a fun thing. Oh, you're not seeing this. So we have a little control. There's three of you. Or there's two of you, one of me. I got you down in the bottom there twice. Yeah. That'll that happens. Okay, is this better? That is better. Okay. Hopefully it stays this way and doesn't dink out on me. It should be okay. So far, so good. Hey, real quick note. Noticed you still have the Babylon 5 station back there on the bookshelf. You need to get that in the mail. I need an address. He hasn't sent it? Not yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Not yet. Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. I will get it in the mail as soon as uh, the person who won it sends it. I forget who it was at this point. Cool. It's been a few I weeks. Will, I'll ping him. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that being said, um, again, YouTube, my apologies. This is not the sort of show I prefer to send out there, but whatever. But maybe, we we'll edit the, maybe we'll edit this particular video. <laughs> You know what though this this really shows your dedication, right? How much you that. care? I do. I care. I care. I care because I don't want you to sit there and look at somebody fuzzy all day long. You're fuzzy like, again. There's. It's got to be upstream on my internet. Yeah. That that's 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 all that it can be. I've I've done everything I can on this side to, uh, crank it down. Um. Like I'm hard, I'm, you know, I'm hardwired in. I'm, I'm everything. Yeah, it'll work. It'll work. Oh, we can man. do what we almost did before and just slap a technical difficulties thing up over you. Yeah, we could. <laughs> it should be back to normal now though. Oh, maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah. I, guys, we're just going to have to continue the show, and please accept my apologies. You tried hard. When that I counts. tried. All I right. very much tried. Very Sheridan. So. Sheridan. What were we saying? We were saying about the, 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 the... It was great. You know, it's good to question, right? I've had those jobs where you question, is this the right thing for me? Should I stick around? Right. So I was a little torn on this storyline for Sheridan because we're four episodes in, and he's already going, oh, should I stay or shouldn't I? Oh, should I go or shouldn't I? And there's one point where you're kind of like, okay, he's still early. He hasn't really settled in yet. And he's met somebody and he's been questioning or he's starting to question whether I should like, I get that from a logistical real life standpoint from a entertainment standpoint. I don't want my brand new show lead questioning this four episodes in mm. if he's going to question, he needs to question like episode two, maybe episode three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in those early, early, early episodes, that's where I want to question it. this far in this should be a settled deal for him, or this is something that gets brought up in season three or four or five right down the road where, he, where he's exactly, like, exactly, exactly. So I just, uh, this particular storyline just didn't do much for me. Like, uh, but in a it way, honestly, it kind of annoyed me, which was really this episode in a way though. Isn't this kind of the third episode, like points of departure and was, what was the next one? Geometry of shadows was, or I think revelations no, was no, the no, second revelations. One. Yeah. Like yeah. they were kind of one, like they were two parts of the same episode, which were second parts to Chrysalis, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if you want to get technical about it, like th he needed to have this conversation while he was having the conversation about his wife. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it just, I'm, I'm as a viewer, I'm not interested in Sheridan going through this right now. I liked what it did for Ivanova though. Like she called him out, right? She's like, yeah, Look, president yeah. puts you here. Cool. If I'm your XO, if there's a problem, you tell me right here, right yep. now. And yep. I like, I've been talking about how she hasn't, she's been different or whatever. That was Ivanova right mm -hmm. there. You know, hey, here's a problem. I'm going to confront it head on. And I had I, I, the note I actually had about that was right now, Ivanova seems like a better CEO than Sheridan does. Wow. Well, yeah. Because yeah. Of, I mean, because of that, like, look, I need to know if you can do this great. If not, fine, I'm going to get somebody and move in. You know, but like Sheridan's going through and and he's talking to Garibaldi. Garibaldi's like, look, you wanted to be Captain Formal. What's going on in the station? He's like, yeah, but not that. Mm -hmm. Which on a leadership level, there's a, y yes, I do want to know what's going on, but I want you to handle your stuff first and just tell me in the debrief. I don't need a minute, my minute update of the minutia. Right. Like I get that, but the way he handled it, it was just moody yeah. and you know, I was like, ah, I, I just didn't appreciate those pieces too much. The first um, time, first time I watched the episode, I, for, while that was happening, I was like, yeah, like totally define those things you need to be updated on, right? What, what, what do you need to be informed about? What do you need to be, you know, brought into the decision making? Yeah, that's great. And then when he just kind of like shut Garibaldi down, I was like, whoa, like where'd this come from? But then the second time I watched it and had the bigger context, I was that 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 scene wasn't there to show that he was a trusting hands-off manager. That scene was there to show, stop bugging me with this petty stuff that, right. you know, this or the delegations that don't want to have their rooms next to each other. Man, it's, I, I think it was all just meant to build that frustration that he's been experiencing. I think that they damaged him as a leader a little bit in doing that, in my mm -hmm. opinion. I did love, though, Bruce Box Lightner, you know, the actor, his acting when Keffer at the end came through the jump gate, like that was sheer, pure, unadulterated joy on like, yeah. you know, like, yes. Like I, I get it. He's led crews. He's lost people. That's a thing that he knows, but there's, he's in a weird headspace and this is a dangerous mission and all this stuff. So he's, you know, he's taking the loss of the star Fury uh, pilots hard so when Keffer came through, I just, I, I, I loved that scene. Like that moment was just like, yeah, that's cool. I, I really liked that moment, except frankly with Keffer, I have almost no connection to this cat yet. I've, so I have nothing. Now so, he's a commander, apparently. I, I, well, he was like second in command of a particular wing. Zeta, is this the new wing that the president delivered way back in that one episode a while ago? Is I that what Zeta so. wing is? Okay. Yeah. Did he show up with that wing and we just met him? 
or like I need something on this guy because he just shows up. He's in the opening credits and he's having dinner with the people on the DVD cover. Like, who is this guy? Like, and, and and like, yes, I thought that moment was well acted that you talked about, Jeff, but I didn't share in that joy because I was like, I wasn't concerned for him. Like he could have died and I would have been just fine from a viewer standpoint because he's mm -hmm. not a guy that I'm following. He's a red shirt. Well, he, he was, um, <laughs> you're over. <laughs> I'm using but, your. I'm stealing. I'm not even bargaining. Not even, I'm just, just stealing take, yours now. Just taking them. But no, I. I don't think he cared that it was Keffer. Like in my head, it was just somebody made it back. Right. It's a guy under my command, and yeah. I care about the people under my command, even if I don't know who they are. Yeah. Cool. I get that. But as a viewer, knowing that this guy is supposed to be a thing, and this is the episode, you know, Ivanova says to him afterwards, like, "Hey, I, I've decided to name you the leader of Zeta Wing." Mm -hmm. Cool. What about Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon? Yeah. <laughs> Before you get to Zeta. Yeah. Zeta's like the sixth letter in the alphabet. <laughs> and the other guy, Galdus, or Galdus, they call it, it was commander. Is, is it the same level of commander or is it like flight wing commander? Or I thought I had a handle on the ranks until today. You know, I'm just yeah. like, what? Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, but I mean, apparently this guy's going to be a thing. Yeah. He's a guy. Like, okay. Like, I guess. Sure. I just, I need to connect with him. If they want me to care about him, I need, and they need to make me care about him. The only other thing I really had out of this episode, Jeff, that I want to discuss personally is the Lynn. Yeah. Now she had all of two and a half minutes in this entire episode, but I thought they were probably the most intriguing two and a half minutes of the entire episode. We see her talking to one of the other Satai, one of the other, yeah, Tehran, I think is yeah. she said his name was. Yeah, one of the great council. And, you know, and he just tells her, and I don't even know if it was great council as much as just somebody who's on the station. Um, but he's like, the people here on the station, the Mimbari on the station are asking if you're still Mimbari. Yeah. Is it appropriate for you to still be the ambassador of Minbar? Because you might not be one of us. And her line is, I'm more Mimbari now than I ever was before. Yeah, I'm more one of us. Yeah. Yeah. What, what does that mean? Yeah, what I that's I, I want to explore that. I don't know that we have enough information to do it, but that's a cool line. It's a cool line, but it makes no sense. I was so on Tehran's side. You can't just go through this thing, lie to everybody and say you did it with the blessing of your government when people know you did not do it with the blessing of your government. <laughs> right. And then just walk around like like it's not a big deal. What what she did is supposed to be a really big deal of some kind, but I don't know anything right. about it. What I know is that um, I I don't like her look. When she was Minbari Delenn, the makeup gave her like this mystique, this something. Now uh -huh. she looks like a defiant, petulant teenager who like sticks her chin out and is just kind of arrogant about, I'm more this than you could have. What is that even? Who are you? And her head Who piece, are you? Her headpiece, instead of looking attached to her, because we've always debated, like, is that a part of their physiology or is it like a thing? This really just, like, it just looks like a thing that she's wrapped around the back of her head. Well, I, I was looking Which at I know is what it is in real life, but still. like, I'm like, how did she brush her hair? Like, clearly it starts at the top of her head and right. is long and goes down. How did she brush it with that thing? I just... Because it know. clearly looks brushed. It's very well styled. I'm, I'm not even joking about that. Like yeah. it clearly looks brushed. Right? Yeah. But yeah, um, I, I was totally on Tehran's side and I feel like, I mean, it's still only the fourth episode and only the, what the second one that she, or, or the, the, yeah, the third one where she's been out of the cocoon. But mm -hmm. I at this point don't care that she's changed. All it has done is made her less uh, interesting to me and and made her not um she doesn't have that air of wisdom anymore now she has an air of arrogance and, that i and, just don't like and i think you're right it's because we don't know what's going on with her yeah and i get it there's mm -hmm. people out there that's how it's supposed to be you're gonna figure that out okay cool but right now my experience is eh. yeah and also <laughs> we're gonna figure it out if i'm the great council who 
the lens already on my bad side, right? We still haven't yeah. decided if we're going to not only kick her out of the great council, but if we're going to let her stay as part of Minbari society, you know, I mean, that's where right. she got left in that whole thing. Then she goes and does this whole thing. How, how is she still acting in any official capacity? Yeah. She's got whatsoever? it. Like you, you take her out. Even if you just say it's just temporary till we figure some stuff out, you pull her out. You, you let Lanier take the lead yep. or you put somebody else in there. That's fine. And you let her sort through her stuff because mm -hmm. <laughs> she's had yeah. a big thing going on. But she's wanting to talk about like some sector 19 stuff or whatever. And like, just get back to work and do business. It's like, no, look at you. You've changed the entire game of who you are and potentially what's happening in the galaxy. You don't get to just after call we, a council meeting. After we told you not to. Exactly. Yeah. Explicitly. Yeah. Now there's another line that I think goes back to this that I think it was Sheridan and Sinclair or not Sinclair, um, Ivanova. Maybe, but they said, uh, talking about Delenn, uh, they said, uh, you know, all that we know about what's happened to Delenn is what she's told us. And, you know, the Mimbari, like with their truth, like they tell us what they tell us, but it's never the whole truth. So my question is, is what is Delenn's whole truth? Because she says, I'm more one of us now than I've ever been before. I think what that means, I, I think what we're to interpret is she has gone full, like half Minbar, half human. Which like, she sees as full Minbar. Yeah, she's full Minbari now. Like well, that's or, the. Or, or that both Minbari and humans are evolving together to become this thing. Mm -hmm. And she is literally, I am more one of us because I am everything. Yeah. More than you guys are. Like I'm more advanced than you guys. I'm a little ascended. And you haven't like, like, that's what I kind of feel. And they haven't told us that yet, but that is the intriguing part of this whole piece to me. Yeah. It's keeping, um, it's keeping us on the line, right? Like I'm interested. I still want to know. I just, my, my problem with the outside of like, I don't like the makeup. I don't like the way it carries her now. But for me, mm -hmm. just, just from a how stuff works thing again, it, it, it's ridiculous that she's still able to keep her job through this. Like that's just, mm. that is of everything that we talked about with hyperspace and everything else. That's the thing in this episode that I'm like, all right, I'm out. Nope. It I takes you out. Yeah, yeah. I'm not buying this at all. Yeah. Well, with all of that, Jeff, well, even before uh, that, cause she had the other oh. piece with Sheridan at the end, right. Where she talked oh, yeah, about, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah no, we're star yeah. stuff. Right. That's cool. I thought that was neat. I liked her take on it that, we're the universe trying to figure itself out. Like I thought that was right. cool, but this was word for word, not only Carl Sagan in his book Cosmos, but mm -hmm. two weeks in a row, I'm so excited. I get to quote another Rush song here because mm -hmm. Neil Peart said it even better. He says, I am made from the dust of the stars and the oceans flow in my veins. I look down into a million houses and wonder what you're doing tonight. That's from Presto. Beautiful song. But great. Here I am trying to make, and maybe this is me like coloring it because I don't I don't like the way they're portraying her right now. But look how wise I am talking about the stars and star stuff. Yeah, that book came out in like, what was it, like 1979 or 1980? People know mm -hmm. about Carl Sagan. This isn't new wisdom you're dropping, Delenn. Like right. Rush wrote a song about it. We're there. It happened. I don't know. It was cool. It was neat. It was interesting. Also a little ridiculous. Oh, can I talk about a little ridiculous? I'm <laughs> a little ridiculous on this on you. Jeff, this will be my final one. Get your buzzer ready. This, oh, I, my final one. this okay. is my final one. Cause this, I think that this is it. This is number six. So I'll, okay. <laughs> here you go. You're right. I've just used them all. I don't care. All right, here we go. Um, the B plot with a uh, dude trying to go out and find all the little parts for the oh, yeah. baklava, whatever thing it is. I'm sitting there going, this is a fantastic episode for the no J consortium. Yes. I have a little bit of trivia on that guy. Also, I was talking to the okay. YouTube crew about it while you were yep. fixing your camera in 2000. <laughs> that didn't work. Right. In 2002, there was uh -huh. an epic, 
epic film that was released that I was working at the movie theaters when it came out. So I had to watch it and maybe like six other people ever watched it, but it mm-hmm. was called Joanna man. Do you know I, this movie Joanna man? I remember hearing about it. I never saw it, but I do. I am aware of the existence of this movie. Do not ever see it. Do not ever watch it. There's okay. you could. Yeah. There's anything is a better use of your time. But, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, Miguel Nunez Jr., who's the person who played the the guy, I think his name was Orwell. Um, okay. At least based on the credits that came through, that he played he played Joanna Man. Like he was okay. he was the ball player in there, and it was killing me while I was watching. It. I'm like, I know, I recognize this guy from somewhere. And there you go, little piece That's of him. trivia. All right, there you go. Um, all right, Jeff. Well, I think we have officially reached that part of the show where it's time to boil it all down and see if the show has any of that star trekky quality to it that we talk about. Maybe it's got a deep moral message. Is there something in there? Does it give us a hope of the future? Hold up a mirror to society. Is it asking us a question to consider and grapple with? Uh, so with that, Jeff, um, I am going to rate this episode on a scale of zero to five deltas as to how star Trek this episode is, but that's not going to leave you sitting there not doing anything because you, my friend, are going to get to rate this episode on a scale of zero to five star furies as to just how much you enjoyed this episode. I shall go first. All right, let's do it. Um, Taking my, my fandom hat off for a moment. Cause I, I clearly think I'm a fan of Babylon five. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. trying to put on, I, we are at this point, right. I think it's we're I'm fans wearing, of the show, right? I'm wearing a star fury t-shirt right Look, now. Uh, you can't get much, listen, when you wear the t-shirt of the band that you're going to go see, you are clearly a fan of that band. Clearly. You should never do that though. Anyway. <laughs> so says Jeremy Piven. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so putting on my, my analytical hat that I've gained as a star Trek podcaster. And I'm, I'm looking for those messages that are in here. And the only one that I find goes back to the conversation we were just having with the Lynn of what does it mean to be more, more than ever before yourself when you have fully evolved. However, they have given us zero information on what's actually going on, so I can't count that. So this one gets no deltas. I find DC Fontana let me down. Yeah. I love you, Dorothy, but this one let me down. I'm just going to assume that this was the episode you were assigned by JMS and not your own because I maybe maybe I was just so in shock by the weird hyperspace rules that I missed it. But this one gets no deltas from me. I don't find anything Star Trek-y about this at all. I can't argue with that at all. Both times I watched it, I couldn't find anything. And you and I actively look for these things. You know, I mean, in the first season, like we were even accused of like digging, you know, and like trying to find things because that's what we do. Right. Well, Star Furies. Did you um did you ever see we were talking before we went on mic about Disney mm-hmm. stuff? Yes. Did you ever see the 1979 Disney joint, The Black Hole? I saw The Black Cauldron, but I've never seen The Black Hole. So it came out in 79. It was very much okay. in response to Star Wars when it came out. It's worth okay. watching. When I was a kid, like a little kid, I loved the movie. It's got these cool little robots that like float around. Uh, one I think was called Vincent, and I forget the other one. Uh, Roddy McDowell. Not Roddy McDowell. Yeah, maybe it was. I don't know. Either way, some great voice acting, some some really cool stuff. They had these um, cool like guns that you held in the middle and had two blasters on the sides. and I don't know. Okay. It was just a, a cool thing. But I watched it not too long. Actually, with Disney+. Plus. I watched it on Disney+. Plus, and it's like a 15-minute long movie. Stretched out okay. to the longest hour and a half I have ever experienced in my life. <laughs> okay. That's this episode. Like, I I was so thankful that the food plan diet stuff, this, that was there to, to break up the excruciating story that literally just told us, hey, hey, remember Shadows? Yeah, they're in the rim. They use hyperspace. This other guy kind of saw one of them. So there's that. I, um... I liked the Star Fury. 
I liked the Star Fury stuff. I really yeah. liked that like telescoping daisy chain thing they did. Sure. And DC Fontana did write it. I want to come from the place that DC that Dorothy saved this episode. That this would have been a, an abomination without mm -hmm. her. So with with kind of all of that, I'm I'm, I'm going to give this one half of a Star Fury. I mean, my question when you just said that was, did she save it? Okay, here's it. I would not say this episode was an abomination. Oh, no, exactly. This, this is not the first 27 minutes of the episode infection. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. This is not Soul Hunter. But th this is not it's 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 not maybe that's what maybe that was my problem. This wasn't a bad episode. It was a blah episode. There's just nothing to it. If this episode, right? we don't know what we don't know, but at this point, if this episode did not air, nothing would change. I feel like we could watch Techno Mages and jump right into the next episode and not have missed a beat. Man, I want Techno Mages back. And I need, so cool. I need them in a great episode. I need them in a great episode. All right, Jeff. Well, that's it. We've got Deltas. We've got Star Furies. We've got one more thing we got to do. We well, do. two more things, actually, I guess. Two more things we got to do before we get out of here, Jeff. Uh, one more one more thing about this particular episode before we get off of it. We are now in season two ranking our episodes, kind of like we did in the season one wrap-up episode. This is going to be our absolute 100% completely accurate definitive ranking of Babylon 5, in this case, Babylon 5 season two. Currently, our ranking stands at points of departure, geometry of shadows, and revelations. Jeff, this is your week. I get no say in it. Where do you put in our rankings? It's going to be a top four episode. A distant star. This will be a top four episode for two weeks. A top five episode for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to go uh, right after Revelations in number four. I don't think I disagree. Yeah. I, I would rather I, I would rather watch Sinclair and his sister than this episode again. Sheridan and his sister. Yes, Sheridan. Oh my gosh! Wow, mm -hmm. I I did that. I was going to say Freudian slip, but maybe it's a Franklin-y slip. There you go. I don't know. Well, that's it for a distant star. Next week, next week, Brent. We so we guess what the next episode is going to be based on the title alone. We don't look at pictures, summaries, anything. The next episode is called "The Long Dark." So based on that title alone, The Long Dark, Brent, what do you think it's going to be about? Well, I feel like I've been in The Long Dark for these last three episodes. Wow. The Long Dark. If this was an if this was a show that featured a ship traveling through space, this would be one of those episodes where like they enter like a void type area and they're like alone. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I feel like I'm not gonna tell you what this episode is gonna be about, but I feel like this is one of those episode titles that is very apropos to the episode, but you only get it after you've seen the episode. Does that make sense? Makes total sense. Um, I, like, so you like you can't you can't hear it and guess what it's actually going to be about. But when you see it on the backside, it does make sense. But here's what I will say, because I, I I I hate to leave it wishy washy. I'm going to give it this definitive piece. Okay. Sometimes you hear an episode title and you're like, yeah, I have no idea what that's about, and then you watch the episode and you go, that episode was neither about a parliament or about dreams. That title made no sense whatsoever. I will say that by the time we get to the end of the episode, the long dark will make complete sense. It's okay. not going to be any question what it means, what it's referencing, what it's alluding to. That will be, th that'll be the definitive thing that I say that if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And I don't think I'm wrong. Like we will know exactly what it means only after we watch the episode. Okay. I'm going to steal a page from your book on uh -oh. my guess. Personnel on the station are forced to shelter in Brown sector for eight days 
while a space storm of some kind passes by. Things are a little uncomfortable down there, you know, but they're generally okay until the most recent people that have come onto the station start acting a little suspicious. Ultimately, it's going to bring everyone a little closer together, and the episode's going to end with a movie night. At least they're not up in like in a cell tube or something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what else? It's, I feel like infection, right? What else could it have possibly been except right. for the infect? That's this. This is. Like yeah. this, it, it, this is the the starless void of space. This is them in a nacelle tube. This is uh-huh. some place where they're holed up and alone, and they have to like face their face their demons or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, come and out. they get a good big kumbaya out of it or something. Exactly. Like yeah. oh, look how now we're all buddies again. Yeah. Well, we're gonna find out right here next week. Please, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to us wherever you're listening or watching us, and please. Go down, hit the little button, and leave us a review. I love reading your reviews. And if you leave us a five-star review, oh, yes, we get to hear from Jakar. So, I like the fact that you play that just to tell people to, to <laughs> send in the five-star review. I think it might be my favorite sound in all Babylon 5 so far. I, I just, yeah. yeah. And even like his whole like, oh, like his face when he says it, that yeah. whole scene is so I don't, good. I still really like Londo going, yahoo! I gotta see if I can get a sound. Like I don't know how that's gonna sound, but I'll see what I, I can know. pull down. Yeah, I don't know. It could be good. Know. Well, everybody, thank you so much. Until next time, Jeff. Oh, no, God, not again. Not again. Come on. God be between you and harm, and all the empty places you must walk. Wow. Thanks, man. Peace and long life. It's my first time. I do dig, I do dig that music. It is fun. That is like, I get so excited to listen to the, to the intro and outro every episode. <laughs> like the other one was kind of cringy, like not cringy. That's not the right word. It just, when you're setting up a podcast, you need the intro music. Like you don't go full out and hire the band and write your own piece for the first couple of episodes. Like you just sort of throw something in as a placeholder and then. A lot of times what happens is that placeholder just sort of sticks like, and that was what that first piece was. Like it was a bit of a placeholder and it just stuck. So I, I I'm really excited for what you put into the work. Like, thank was, you for doing that work, by the way. Yeah, you're it, welcome. It, I great. was, I was really excited when I accidentally watched the opening credits and I was like, oh, this is new music. Oh, I get to change our music. Now. I've got an excuse. Honestly, somebody a long time ago either tweeted us or emailed or something. And they even said they're like, this is the best Babylon five podcast with the worst intro music. <laughs> and we were like, do we change it? I think, it? I, do saw we do I, think I saw that. Yeah. I, I, I mocked, that. I mocked up a couple of things. Like, what about this? And then also it was like, I don't know. I mean, whatever, whatever, you know, if someone's going right. to not listen because of this 15 seconds, whatever. And then this came right. up. I'm like, yes, finally. <laughs> right. There you go. I like it. I like it. Well, Hey, YouTube, thank you guys for making it all the way through. If you have made it all the way through, please like subscribe, all that sort of stuff that you guys know that we do here, um, at, at YouTube, cause that's how we do it over here. And, uh, you guys are awesome. Why uh, comment down below, tell us, uh, explain to us the whole hyperspace thing, because I Brent, like, don't Jeff, no, Jeff, don't we're going to get a dissertation. <laughs> no, look, I am like, because they did it the way they did it. I am stuck here. I live here. This I, is you. I, yeah. I could not get past this thing for the rest of the episode because you I was like. You are not linear. No, it was just driving me crazy. I'm like, but I don't understand. How is this? Anyway, okay, I'm getting out of here. We've already talked about it. <sighs> we bye, talked about everybody. that episode for a while. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>